I'm going to show you how I make a cauliflower crust plant-based whole food pizza. No dairy, no cheese, no sugar, no salt, no oil, and it tastes amazing. Pharmaceutical companies and private health insurance companies hate it. So naturally, we love it. We have to get some more of it. Blood sugar friendly, wonderful food for your pancreas and your entire body for that matter. So let's get started. And it doesn't hurt to have a little glass of wine to help you along the way. Unless you're on a strict eating plan right now, then stay true to the plan. It'll be worth it. So if you like what you're going to see, I've got over a hundred of these videos showing how to make all kinds of different things. If you go to TomBerkenmeyer.com, that's TomBerkenmeyer.com. Take out the space, all lowercase, just like it's spelled on social media. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is rice up a head of cauliflower. You can use a shredder like this. You can use a blender like this. You can... You know, do whatever it's going to take. I personally, for this time out, I actually went out and I just bought some pre-riced cauliflower, organic, because I just don't feel like doing all that kind of work today. And, uh, you know, once you get it riced up, you're going to want to boil it, soften it up. And once it's softened up, you want to drain it from the water and put it back into a food processor of some kind and puree it up, slightly puree, not fully and then take it back out and let it dry. I liked putting it between some uh, paper towels and just letting it sit for a few minutes or a few hours or even overnight if you want to so that it's riced up, soft, and dry. So you can use whatever method you want to get that accomplished. And I've already got mine right here. We're gonna use about one cup of this, okay? And let me show you what we're gonna do with that. Well, we're just gonna put it into this here mixing bowl. So the reason you want to do that first is because it's going to, when it's sitting on the stove, you know, boiling and softening up, it's not going to take that long, maybe 10 minutes, 5 minutes, but then you can start measuring out the other ingredients and putting those together. And I'll show you what those are right now. So once you get the cauliflower on the stove, the very next thing you're going to want to do, so this is very much strategic and in order to save time, get some good organic chia seeds. This is going to be your egg replacement as a binding agent. It's brilliant. I love it. Some chia seeds. We're gonna do about four. Whoops, where's my bowl at? Here it is. Get a bowl. We're gonna do about four tablespoons. So that's one, two, three, and four into this bowl. And then to four tablespoons, we're gonna do about six tablespoons of water. One two, three, four, five, six. So I'm not a math whiz, but what is that? What's, what's the ratio? Four tablespoons of chia seed, six tablespoons of water. What is that? Uh, two thirds is about the ratio, something like that. But anyway, just stir that up so that all of it is soaked in the water. You can use your finger, clean your hands, right? <laughs> And this just needs to soak for a few minutes. That doesn't really take long, but you're gonna notice it's gonna turn into a sticky kind of substance, a fun, gooey kind of substance, like an egg. And it works as a beautiful binding agent because we're gonna keep this plant-based, whole food, super food, super healthy, super tasty, delicious, and you're gonna love it. All right, move on to the next thing. Did I mention we're gonna add garlic? That part's up to you. I love garlic, so yeah, I'm gonna be adding some garlic. And this is typically where I take a sip of my wine because it just goes with garlic. Mm. Okay. Oh, by the way, plant-based, whole food nutrition, excellent for muscle development. And muscle is a tissue that requires your body to constantly burn calories from fat just to maintain it. That's why for weight management, putting long lean muscle on your body is the most effective thing you can do and increases your metabolic rate so that you're burning calories from fat even when you're sleeping. Okay, so garlic. Use a garlic press, a mince or whatever you want. Uh, chop it up really fine. I got a press because I love the press and uh, I always eat at least 
one clove. <laughs> oh man, I know I'm weird. Mm, and I chew it up, I crush it in my mouth because crushing the garlic cloves raw is what activates the healing chemicals, the medicinal elements of the garlic, and we love that. It's another example of what pharmaceutical and private health insurance companies hate, so naturally we love doing that. So, I don't usually use my uh, finger to scrape this like this. I usually use a fork or a butter knife, but I don't have one at my disposal right now. <laughs> And I'm not serving the public, so it's okay. Okay, cool. Got all the garlic in there. Lots of garlic. Optional thing. So, because I love heat, I'm also going to check this out. I'm not really measuring this, but cayenne pepper powder. Organic cayenne pepper powder. Put some of that in there. A little more. And a little more. Oh my god, that is so good. What I'm also going to do is... um. So it's about one part cauliflower, which I've already put in here, um, to one part some kind of flour. Don't use regular all-purpose white bleached out flour. For this particular one, I'm using garbanzo bean flour. There's also coconut flour, almond flour, different kinds of flours that have nutritional value to it. So make sure you go with something nutritional, otherwise it kind of defeats the purpose of this. Another thing that I will add is some black pepper. Coarse ground, but that's up to you, whatever kind you want to add. Totally up to you. A little bit more. Another thing that I'm going to add is going to be nutritional yeast. Not to be confused with brewer's yeast, otherwise it's no longer plant-based whole food. This is a great way plant-based way to get your B vitamins. You can go, I don't know, three tablespoons, two tablespoons. I'm just going by sight right now because I've done this quite a few times by now. So I'm guessing I have between two and three tablespoons in here. Also, this really tastes delicious. It's got a cheesy kind of flavor to it. Actually, I want more because <laughs> it's just so good. Really cool cheesy kind of flavor to it. All right, what else am I missing? So next we're gonna add some dried oregano. I like to add basil as well as oregano, but I'm out of basil and oops, my bad. It's still gonna taste really good though. So we're just gonna go, I'm gonna guess somewhere between a half a tablespoon to a full tablespoon. But since I'm not using basil, I'm gonna do at least a tablespoon of this. It's gonna be really good. And I'm not shy to overdo it with these wonderful herbs and spices because they're so healthy and they taste so good and I love a lot of flavor. So that's how I do things. And now we're going to get back to this awesome egg replacement made of chia seeds soaked in water. That, oh, I mean, when you do this, you'll feel a consistency how it works as a binding agent for this to make the pizza crust. And the chia seeds, it's a superfood. Lots of energy, lots of healthy fats, omega-3 fatty acids, and it's whole. So we're not using any oil, but we're using fat, but it's in its whole food form. Big difference, P keeping it plant-based whole. Mmm, because that's sanitary. <laughs> okay, so now I got everything in it that I want to put in it. So I'm going to mix it all up. I'm going to add just little bits of water at a time while I stir everything in. Okay, so I paused the video so I can get this done. Just takes a minute or two. A little bit of water at a time till it's the consistency that I want. And this is something that's rather delicate, this part of it. You don't want to put in too much water, otherwise it's gonna fall apart and it's not gonna stay together right. So if you put in too much water, then you just have to add some more garbanzo bean flour, coconut flour, almond flour, whatever kind of flour that you're using, as long as it's got a nutritional value in that flour. So this is all done. This is the consistency that I want it now. So now we're going to lay it out on some parchment paper on a cookie sheet. Let me show you what that looks like. So there I am, centered. Got my parchment paper down on my cookie sheet. Here's my batter 
crust mix, something. Scoop it all out. And from here, I just start pressing it out. And so you'll notice it's not one of these dealios where I'm like, you know, throwing it up in the air, tossing it like whatever. Um, but that would have made a funny video, especially considering I've never done that before. I'm sure it would end up on the floor. Not good. I don't like waste. So as I'm pressing this out, this ice cream scooper, you know, the flat kind of ice cream scooper actually works really well. And I don't do ice cream, so I pretty much only use this for this. And if you find it gets, it tends to get sticky, which it doesn't for me. I mean, see, look at that. It's not sticking at all. But if you do have a problem with that, you can always just dip it in some water once in a while and continue to press it out. But here's what it looks like when I press it out. You can also, I haven't tried a rolling pin, but if you want to, you can try a rolling pin. Put some of that flour that you used, garbanzo bean flour, coconut flour, whatever flour you're using that has nutritional value. Uh, put some of that on the rolling pin and maybe roll it out and try that. I haven't tried that on, on this one. But this is basically what it looks like. And I want to do my best to keep the, the thickness of this somewhat consistent. I don't know, I might do somewhere between a quarter inch and a half inch can, um, thickness throughout this whole thing. But this part takes a couple of minutes, not terribly long, but it does take a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna pause this and I'll be right back. You don't have to do anything, it'll just keep playing for you. And voila, it's all done. I can even do this around the edge to make it round and nice. So mine's about three quarters of an inch thick. I can make it bigger. I mean, if you're gonna be feed, this is gonna feed probably two people easily, maybe three, and if there's a good side dish, maybe four. But if you're feeding more people, like four or five people, then you can just double up on all the ingredients and keep it all proportional, easy enough to figure out. And, uh, or you could do the same, but make two of these pizzas and put them on different racks in the oven. Oh, by the way, now would be a good time to preheat the oven, maybe a few minutes ago, <laughs> to 350, 375. Um, Right now I got mine set on 375, it's preheating now. It'll, you know, it'll beep in probably a few minutes to let me know that, hey, it's here, it's at 375. And then it takes about a half hour um, at about, at that temperature, it takes about a half hour. And I just put it in like this. I don't put the sauce on or any of the toppings. No, I'm just doing the crust right now. The first time I ever tried pizza in my life, I didn't know any better, but I actually did this and I put the tomato sauce and all the toppings and this and that. And the crust takes so long to make. I destroyed the, everything. All the toppings was so badly overcooked. It wasn't even that good anymore. Oops. A lot of you watching this probably already know that. It's like a duh thing. But um, I'm not a natural born cook by any means. I had to learn a lot of stuff. A lot of apparently common sense stuff I had to learn. But hey, it's okay. I love learning. So I'm just going to put this in the oven now. And... Here's what that looks like in case you've never seen anybody put something in an oven before. Get this off its little tripod and away we go. Let's check this out. Do, 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 do. Doing this with one hand. Oops. Okay, I got my beautiful stuff there and then I'm gonna open the oven because I know you guys have I know this is extremely helpful because you've never seen somebody put something in an oven before. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Middle rack, I guess. I don't know. But it looks so beautiful just sitting there. <sighs> so what to do during the half hour it's going to take to do? You can get your toppings ready. I mean, whatever you like to top your pizza with. I'm keeping this plant-based whole food. I'm going to put some mushrooms on it. I'm going to put some tomatoes on it. I'm going to put some fresh um, basil leaves on it. Or is it oregano? <laughs> remember. Let me check. What did I buy? I do not remember. But for this, I'm not going to be using the dried stuff. I'm going to be using the fresh. Here it is. <laughs> oregano. Organic, fresh oregano. So I'm going to put that on the top of it. And what else am I going to put on the top of it? I don't know. But those are some things. Oh, and the cheese. i got to show you how to make the cheese, too. So, at any rate, you got to stick around for the rest of this video anyway. I'm going to turn this thing off now. You just let the thing keep playing, because <laughs> I'm going to stitch it all together anyhow. Because um, it's got about a half hour to go. But one thing I'll say right off the bat before we go any further, I like putting the oregano on dead last, because I don't like it cooked, and I want to get more of the health benefits from eating it raw. In fact, 
um, all my toppings I'm going to put on uh, after I take it out of the oven. Now, when I take the pizza crust out in a half hour from now, I'm going to put the tomato sauce on it and I'm going to put the dairy-free cheese on it. And I'm going to throw it back in for maybe five minutes, ten at the very most. And then when that's done, then I'm going to put the other toppings on. That way it's all raw, all those other toppings. And I'm just going to get more medicinal value from all those toppings. And it's going to taste so good. But that's, that's what I do. That's my personal preference. So I'll be back in a half hour. Or for you watching this, I'll be back in less than a second. Mm, you can lick the batter. Mm, there's nothing in it that can hurt me. There's no dairy, no milk, no eggs, nothing that can spoil or cause me any problems. Mm -hmm. Now we have to make the cheese. That's something we can do while this is going because we got to put cheese on it, right? Actually, you don't have to. I've had this without any cheese at all and it's really good. So, but if we are going to make cheese, and I've shown how to do this before in other videos where I'm making nachos and cheese with no dairy. Imagine that. It's really good. So I'm just going to take a handful of cashews. You can measure it out if you want to. I'm going to say a third of a cup, maybe a half a cup, just to make sure you got enough, about a half a cup approximately I'm putting in here. And then I'm going to put about the same amount of water. So it's basically about a one to one ratio. If I'm doing a half a cup of cashews, I'm going to do approximately a half a cup of water. And then I'm going to go back to the nutritional yeast and I'm going to put some of this in there. I'm guessing I'm putting in at least a tablespoon, maybe a little more because I like it so much. And it's got all those B vitamins, a plant-based source of B vitamins. Can you imagine that? And some black pepper, and let's see here, some ginger powder, love ginger powder, a little bit of turmeric but not a lot, there we go, probably use like a half a teaspoon of that, and maybe a full teaspoon of um, <coughs> the ginger, and because I love that heat baby. Some cayenne pepper powder. You don't have to add cayenne pepper, but if you like a lot of heat or a little heat, you can add a little or a lot or none at all. It's up to you. I love this. So I'm going to keep adding a little bit more. Oh yeah. Oh, baby. It's so good. I love that stuff so much. Okay. Then I'm going to blend it up. I'm using a Nutribullet Prime. You can also use a Vitamix. I have a Vitamix, but this is an easier cleanup, so for this I'll just use this. You can also soak the cashews for a couple hours beforehand, make it even better. Now, this is where you're probably not going to get it exactly right the first time, even me, and I, I've made these a ton of times. It needs a little bit more water. Or you might find you need to add more nutritional yeast to get it to the right consistency, but this time around, uh, it's a little too thick. <laughs> so I added some water. I'm going to put it back on this thing. Because you want it to be a melted, cheesy, like creamy consistency, and it is so good once you get it. Whoops. I didn't have that on there tight. Okay. Now it's on there tight. All right. Just a touch more water. Actually, let me just get my filtered water thing here. I use filtered water. Just a little bit and it will be perfect. There, I think that's all I'm gonna need. I think we'll find out. Notice I didn't pause it for this part like I did in other areas because I want you to see that this part here is a process of just getting it to the right consistency. And if I added too much water, then I'll just add some more nutritional yeast to bring it back down. I did a little dance. 
dance for you. And I don't really dance, but I did just now. Don't say I never danced for you. That is looking mighty fine. In fact, let's see here. See, it's like a melted cheese. It's so creamy and so wonderful. And I can do this because there's no dairy, nothing I can hurt and just, mmm. I don't even need to really add anything else. Like I got everything just right. So this is going to be my cheese. When the crust is done, I'm going to put down the marinara sauce. And then this is going to go over the top of that. And I'll sh show you that in, uh, I guess, about 20, 25 minutes from now. Or for you watching this in less than a second. While we wait, or while I wait, I want to point out just what I've shown you with how to make that raw vegan cheese or that plant-based whole food cheese without any dairy to make like a melted cheese consistency that's so creamy and so delicious and so healthy for you. Just that one thing alone that I've shown you just... Just that one thing alone is enough. I mean, even without the rest of this video, if you didn't want to make a pizza and you just want to learn how to make that, because you can put that over broccoli, over any kind of a vegetable medley you want to make, uh, cheesy casserole, this or that. There's so many things that we put cheesy sauces on that's otherwise would be really healthy, but then we ruin it all with really horrible cheesy sauces and sugary sauces and salty, fatty sauces. There is no salt in that. There's no oils. The fat source is a whole food fat source. That would be the cashews. The cashews, raw cashews, makes, can't be co or cooked cashews. It has to be raw. Otherwise, it's not going to come out creamy. But it is a whole food fat. And there's no sugar, no salt. It's all plant-based whole food. It's extremely healthy. And you eat plant-based whole food. Like the marinara sauce that I'm going to do here um, it has no sugar added to it whatsoever. There is, uh, you have to look at the ingredients list to make sure if it has any kind of, even healthy sugar, I'm not going to get it. I don't do sugar so because it's an isolate. It's not whole food. So like you'll still see sugar show up on the label because the some of the ingredients just has sugar in it naturally. But there's not a sugar isolate added, so therefore there's no sugar that's going to show up in the ingredients list, but it will be in the label because some of the whole foods in the ingredients list just naturally have sugar in it. I hope that makes sense. And if you make your own marinara sauce and you want to sweeten it up, Think in terms of whole foods. Throw a couple of dates in there. So dates are very sugary, but it's also got the fibers and every phytochemicals and everything else of the dates. So it's no longer a sugar isolate, but it's dates or a banana or mangoes or, you know, whatever, depending on what you're making. That's, that's a game changer when you start thinking in terms of whole foods rather than isolates, whether it be oils or sugars or whatever. That's a game changer. You're going to be less likely to be a customer of pharmaceutical companies, you're going to be less likely to end up a sick hospital patient, and you're going to be less likely victimized by a soulless private health insurance industry. So start training your brain to think in terms of whole foods. If you need to sweeten some, something up, think of whole foods that you can puree up or blend in or mix in or whatever. And same thing with fats instead of oils, even healthy olive oil and avocado oil and nut oils, skip all that. For this, I'm using cashews. So it's got the oil that's naturally occurring in the cashew, or uh, you know, for other dishes that I make, not cheese, but uh, like salad dressings, I'll use whole walnuts instead of olive oil or walnut oil. I'll use whole uh, walnuts, or I could use olives for that matter. So I'll still get the olive oil, but it's gonna be with the um, phytochemicals and all the fibers and everything else it's supposed to come with in its whole food form. Can't say enough about that. That is a game changer. Hi, my pretties. It's done. I didn't film it coming out of the oven because it's really not that exciting. <laughs> but there it is. It doesn't look like a normal pizza crust. It's If you could smell what this house smells like right now from the aroma coming from this being in the oven, you'd be making this like yesterday. It is, man, this is one of the best ways to make a house smell really good is to make this crust. It's that amazing. And it just, you know you're in for a real treat by the time you have the finished product because of the way that it smells. So, now I just put down this tomato sauce. Remember, no sugar isolates, no isolates of any kind. So make sure you look at the ingredients. Make sure there's no sugar listed because that's going to be the main culprit. And almost, almost every tomato sauce that you find at the grocery store is going to have a sugar isolate. It's 
really not that exciting me watch me uh, exciting <laughs> it's really not that exciting listening listening to me get my tongue all twisted and tied up it's really not that exciting watching me put down tomato sauce but this is how I do it I pour it out and then I just spread it around with a spoon kind of a larger spoon and it doesn't really take long maybe I don't know a minute if that and just a dab more and I think I will have it so I think think that is about it. Yeah, actually a dab more. There we go. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. And then next, oh we love this part. Now this part I have yet to perfect. Let me explain what I mean by that. So I need to learn how to make a plant-based, dairy-free cheese, like, you know, a shredded consistency. I just, I haven't even looked yet, to be honest with you, and I will, and that's how I'm going to improve this. Otherwise, the taste is awesome. It's just, on a pizza, you usually do shredded cheese, so I like to figure that out. And this is a melted cheese consistency. So the way that I put this on is I sort of drizzle it on all over the place, usually in a spiral motion. I don't use the spoon to spread it out, otherwise it just mixes with the tomato sauce and I don't know how great that's going to be if I were to do that. So I just sort of do this in a spiral motion, I might drip it on, I might dot it on, who knows. But this takes a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause this. And that's what it looks like when I get the cheese on. I just sort of put it on in a spiral pattern, that's the best I've come up with so far. And the only reason I'm even interested in doing a shredded cheese consistency is just for aesthetics because there's nothing wrong with the way this tastes. It's so freaking good. It's just aesthetics. So here's it. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's another trick health benefit. So the tomato, it's a superfood for the heart. It's got four chambers like a heart. It's got a lot of other physical characteristics that's similar to the heart. Its signature is the heart, and science has proven that tomatoes are a superfood for the heart. It literally helps the heart nourish itself and repair itself on a daily basis. And the tomato is, uh, there are certain health benefits you get from a tomato eating them raw, and then when you heat it up, but don't overcook it, there's other health benefits that you get. So for this pizza, I'm going to put half the tomatoes on slightly cooked, and then the other half I'm going to put on just completely raw. So in other words, before we go back in the oven, I will have half of these tomatoes put down on it. And then I'll throw it in the oven for about 5 or 10 minutes or whatever. So it's not cooked too much. <laughs> and then I'll put the other half of the tomatoes on. So I'm going to get a full scope of the medicinal healing health benefits of these gorgeous tomatoes. Because I'll get a mix of slightly cooked and uncooked raw tomatoes. Not a bad plan. Makes sense, right? Totally logical. And the onions, I'm going to put on completely raw, so after it's done. And the fresh oregano here, I'm going to put on after it's done as well. Oh, and the mushrooms. I'm going to put those on completely raw as well, so put those on after the, it comes out of the oven fine, for, for the final time. I don't know if it makes a difference health-wise. You could look it up, I guess. Maybe some of you can let me know if it makes a difference health-wise, if it's slightly cooked or sautéed or raw or who knows. If you want to look it up, feel free to let me know. Got that back in the oven, maybe five or ten minutes. I'll pull it out, put the rest of these toppings on. But while that's going, I know for a fact that my audience likes to be well-informed. And I don't have an audience of blind, obedient followers. Skip that. No captive audience here. And you can research this all you want as well, because I do when I learn things from people that I respect and so forth. So the tomato I already talked about, the onion. The onion is another amazing superfood. It actually maximizes the healing capacity of every one of your one trillion cells in your body. So it makes sense to get some onions in your diet on a daily basis. The cauliflower that I showed you earlier, it's a superfood for the brain. It's got a lot of physical characteristics of a brain two hemispheres and so on and so forth and science has proven it's a superfood for the brain it helps get rid of gray matter and so forth walnuts too 
another superfood of the brain. It looks like a brain, kind of. And science has proven, you know, it's, it's the signature foods of the brain. Wonderful superfoods for the brain. Um, the mushroom that I'm going to be throwing on later as well. This is a superfood for the thyroid. How do we know that? Because it has a lot of physical characteristics of a thyroid. And uh, science has, in modern times, science has proven that this is actually a superfood of the thyroid. Uh, so get some, if you can, get some mushrooms in your daily diet. Uh, a cool thing about mushrooms, <laughs> to get some more vitamin D, on top of vitamin D, you take some, like a handful of mushrooms, a cup of them, a couple cups, whatever, and you put them out in the direct sunlight for an hour or so, or more, a couple hours, whatever, and it absorbs the vitamin D from the sun, and then you eat that, and you're getting more of the absorbable vitamin D in your body, and you don't get a sunburn. Wow, no trade-off. That's pretty cool. And, gosh, what else? Oh, my disclaimer, I'm not sharing any of this with you to undermine your doctor or other healthcare professional, because that would be very illegal. Um, so I'm giving you generalized information, and take personal responsibility for yourself. Do your research and be safe, okay? What else was I going to say? I can't remember, so I'll pause this until it comes back to me. I remember! I remember, I thought of it. So I went and saw Don Tolman. He's a internationally known speaker, great guy, met him a couple times, really funny too. He's very passionate about this kind of stuff. He was telling me a story about these women in Australia, I believe it was, four women who had no thyroid. They were on different thyroid medications for a thyroid problem and didn't work out. They had their thyroid surgically removed or something horrible like that. And these four women went on a diet of a plant-based whole food diet with a focus of, I think it was a couple cups or 16 ounces worth, something like that, of mushrooms every day. And in 14 months, they grew a thyroid back to full working functional capacity, no medication required. And it's like, nobody's ever, like you never hear of that kind of stuff, especially not in the medical community. So that grabbed my attention right away. But I roll back to the disclaimer, because you need to be safe, do your own research, and don't blindly follow me or because I'm just some long-haired freak on the internet. Isn't the lighting here just wonderful? Okay, so we just took it out. It's not going back in. Personal preference, I want to keep it raw. And there's a medicinal reason for it too. Most, mostly raw. So the slightly cooked tomatoes are on there and the cooked everything else. Now I'm gonna add the raw tomatoes. So I get a wide scope of all those different healing benefits. Pharmaceutical hates that. Oh, and private health insurance hates that because they can't victimize me. <laughs> okay, and now the raw onions. Yeah, I chopped up a lot of onion. I, I might have to put some of this in a Ziploc bag or something because this is a lot. And it's raw, so it's gonna be really potent. And I just had that raw garlic clove, too. Wanna kiss me? <laughs> yeah, I'm not using all of this onion. This is nuts. Overdid it, man. I think that's enough onion. Even this is a whole lot. Oh my god. Throw some mushrooms on top. Ah, oh, that looks so good. That looks so so delicious. You could chop these up if you want to, but I kind of like the mushrooms really big. Even my onions and tomatoes, I left pretty chunky because that's just what I like. I like that a lot. And then I'm going to throw the oregano on. Yummy. And that's it. So I'm just going to let it cool for like five minutes. And then I'll slice it up with the pizza slicer. And I'll take a taste test. And that'll be my final video segment. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Or if you watching this, I'll be back in a flash. Okay, this might be the final video. We'll see. So there's my gorgeous pizza. If you want to, you can sprinkle some more nutritional yeast. Not to be confused with brewer's yeast. You can sprinkle more of this on top if you want to. I'll demonstrate it. Aesthetically looks cool and it's got a really cheesy flavor so it adds more cheesiness to it too. People who try this stuff typically really like it a lot. 
And then this is mostly stick free, but not completely of. So I like to do this with the spatula. As you can see, very easily going underneath the whole pizza. And okay, so it's all free of the parchment, so that's pretty simple. And now, can I touch this? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. So now I will cut this, or slice it up, I guess would be the right verbiage, right? Because this is a chunky ingredient and it's kind of raw, most of it, or a lot of it, it can be a little bit tricky slicing through versus everything being really cooked down. And I like to slice my pizza up in eighths, as you can see. You cut it in squares, I guess, or in fourths, whatever you want. I can't waste anything, so look at that. I'm taking everything off, the pizza cutter, the pizza slicer, and... Mmm. 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 After eating raw garlic and raw onions while I was making this, I have no idea. If anybody took me up or wanted to take me up on that invitation for a kiss. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me take a slice here. And go for this one. It stays together pretty darn well, man. And with no eggs as a binding agent, remember? I use the chia seeds as the binder to replace the egg. Exponentially greater health benefits doing that. Tastes amazing. Oh, another thing you could do. If you're nuts like me for heat, you can, no reason you can't add more cayenne pepper on the top of it, right? Just a little sprinkle here, but there we go. And here we go. Now this is honest. If you go back in my videos, there was one or two videos where I did a taste test and it really wasn't good and I decided to keep them up anyway. Here we go. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Oh my god, that's good. So there you have it. A closing thought. An 11 year old boy once said. You're going to pay the farmers or the hospitals. Spend a little bit more money on the good, healthy, organic food whenever possible. Don't stress about it. And learn how to do this kind of stuff. Because I truly believe you do not want to end up a sick hospital patient or a victim of private insurance companies or a pharmaceutical customer either. I don't. I'm pretty sure you don't either. So this is all worthwhile. It really is. I've got over 100 episodes of all kinds of different meals you can make, stuff that's quick. This was more intense, obviously, involved. The stuff you can do in under a few minutes, stuff that's more involved. Over a hundred different things, and I'm always adding new stuff. TomBerkenmeyer.com is my website. Take out the space, all lowercase, TomBerkenmeyer.com. You'll see my plugin for YouTube. And when you get to YouTube, go to my playlists area, and among my playlists, you'll see the plant-based whole food cooking channel. And you can see all of them, all kinds of stuff you can make. It's good for the whole family, and you can see whatever makes sense for you. So if that helps you out in your journey to become healthier and save more of your money from medical bills, then I'm really happy to help you out. And last but not least, if you love health and wellness and clean eating and so forth, stuff like this like I do, and you're interested, sincerely interested in making money, making money, your own money by perpetuating health and wealth and so forth, instead of sickness and poverty. Then get a hold of me, I'll show you what I've got going on. If it's a good fit for you, we'll lock arms and we'll run together. Or walk, whatever pace you want. So that's all I got. Please share this. I'm sure you've got tons. This is a popular idea, a cauliflower crust, a healthy pizza. This, that's a really, because people love pizza. And to be able to make one that's really healthy with cauliflower and all these ingredients that I just showed you, and that tastes amazing, this is a really, like obnoxiously popular idea. So please share this and I think you'll find that a lot of people will get benefit from this. So share, 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 share. And if you try this out, I hope that you do. Tell me how your house smells. 
and tell me how you like it, your family likes it, your kids, and so forth, and just share anything you want with me. I'd love to hear about it, okay? So, bye for now. It's a lot of fun doing this. Stay tuned for more stuff. Always more stuff coming, okay? Bye for now.